In this video, I'm going to show how to link the DSS time series paths into the alternative editor in ResSim. And notice that I said I'm going to link. We're not really importing the DSS files. We're just telling ResSim where to go out and find those DSS files. So I have a, a uh, working ResSim model, an almost working ResSim model. So I'm going to assume that you've gotten to this point in your model. And I'm going to go to the alternative editor. And what we're doing is we're putting in flow at the upstream end of the main stem and the upstream end of the tributary. If we go look at these junction properties, we have main inflow. And you got to make sure that you're not skipping any lines here. So make sure that you're not starting on the second line accidentally. I think that, that can give you some problems. So you have main inflow. We could apply a factor to it if you just want to use the values directly from DSS, then just put in a factor of one. So that's for the upstream end of main. We call this main inflow. We can also go look at the tributary. So this is called trib inflow. Again, we make sure that we start on the first line. You can have multiple inflows coming in to one junction, but in this case, I'm only using one inflow coming in. Um, at each one of those junctions. And again, I'm using a factor of one, so it's telling ResSim that I want to use the values that are directly coming out of DSS. So now when I open up the alternative editor, I shrink this down a bit. You can see that I have the time series tab this is the alternative that I'm using. So I have the time series tab highlighted. And by the way, for look back, I'm using constants. But if you do use time series for any of your lookbacks, you have to tell ResSim where to go find those time series also. But in this case, I'm just using constants as the look back. So in order to link a DSS file and the appropriate pass, what I do is I highlight the first line or main inflow and I tell it that I want to select the DSS path and now it opens so it'll ask you if you want to find it I've already had that open but then it'll allow you to navigate to whichever directory you want to go to and I'm going to use a constant of 500 CFS, or the DSS file that's named constant 500 CFS. You got to make sure also that your data covers the simulation time period, including whatever look back period you're using. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to then hit set path name. And to show you what happened, I need to move this out the way. And you can see here that it filled in the DSS file name and all of the paths for, because you can see in this DSS file that I actually do have three different paths. So you highlight the path and then hit set path name. I'll do the same thing for the tributary inflow. I'll hit set path name. I can close the DSS file and you can see that it populated both of these. And if you want to see if the data is actually there, you can hit plot and you can see this is just a constant 500 CFS. It's obviously not realistic data, but you can see that I do have data there. You can also tabulate it if uh, you want to see it tabulated. So I'll save that alternative and then I'll close it. We can save the network and then we can move on to our simulation. I already had this simulation develop, and since I made a change in the network module, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a replace from the base directory, because if I'm working in the network module, that is going to be um, considered the base directory. So I'm going to do a replace from base directory and hit OK. Now if I went to go look at the alternative, you can see that um, I'm looking at the time series, and you can see that I have the correct time series in, in for both the main inflow and for the tributary inflow. One other thing I need to do, since this 
simulation was already developed, I can then edit this. And I can also tell it to run a new extract. And whenever you make a change to the DSS files that are um, being linked in the model, you want to make sure that you go in and you extract those or run a new extract. That's done automatically when you first create the model, but as you make changes or you tell it to go to a different DSS file, make sure that you run a new extract. And hopefully if I did everything correctly, it should run and it does run to 100%. So that can help with uh, better understanding how to link the DSS files in ResSim and how to get that to work. So if you found the video helpful, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, you'll get information or get notification about when new videos come out. And thanks for watching this one.